But yeah, moving on from that, let's go through some hidden worlds. And this is a really strange level. It's ba you're basically just on a giant Rubik's cube thing, and I I'm just gonna let the timer go out because you don't really win this stage. You kind of just wait until the timer runs out, and you and then you win. Um, it's yeah, this level's not great. <laughs> Do a little dance. Yeah. I don't understand the point of that level. Okay, I will say, there's also this, like, as well, like, you see, I've been seeing Omo Chow throughout the game, and Basically, he'll just give you a bunch of random missions to do, and I guess that's some... I, I guess that's something, but it's really kind of just... I, 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 I don't know, I never really had much much of an incentive to do that stuff. Like, maybe I'll do that... Maybe I'll do that on stream in the future, but like... I don't know, dude. I like the... I, I think... Out of the, um, like, Carlos Gens and uh, Lost World, I definitely think uh, Generations has the, has the the best uh, side content, because you have the different missions you do for every every zone, and they all have, um, they, they all have, like, their unique level design. Like, it, a lot of it is basically just a slightly modified version of the, oh, good, uh, of the main, like, of the main level, but... I think, I feel like they make it different enough to make it, like, if you want to do, like, all, like, do an all missions run for gens, you won't, you won't get bored and feel like you're wasting your time with, like, uh, padded content, if you will. It feels like there's actually something worth to doing them, and, uh, yeah, you don't really have that here. You basically just have a bunch of get 50 rings in random level, and then that's it. Or like, uh, just random stuff like that. And I mean, yeah. Like maybe, maybe if they give gave you like an emblem or something, or like the equivalent to that, maybe it would f it'll feel more like doing the challenges in the adventure games. And I do like going for those. So I don't know. Maybe that, maybe that would have, like maybe that simple change would have made a difference. But it's, yeah. It, I, uh, it's just, I, I guess. It just kind of feels empty because there's no reward for doing it, and it's not the most exciting thing to do in the first place. So it's just, it's just kind of there. I don't know. But yeah. Speaking of weird gimmicks that this game does with flying the tornado for this one stage, I feel like this could have been good for like, like uh, stages earlier on in the main game maybe, and this could have been like the special ultimate. Uh, challenge, like challenging stage, for this like type of gameplay. But like, yeah, th this kind of just exists. Like, it's just one again, one of those things. Another one of those things where like, this game kind of just throws a bunch of stuff at the wall, regardless of if it's gonna stick or not. But uh, I don't mind this stage too much. It's kind of cool, but it's just like it, I don't know. This game is again. This game is just so weird. It doesn't. It feels like it doesn't really know what it wants to be. <laughs> okay, this is the <laughs> only actual platforming uh, stage of the hidden world, and I actually remember this being fairly challenging. I don't think. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think there's any red rings in these stages. Uh, I think, I think they could have done that to make these. Like even more difficult, uh, but it's. I think it's. I think it's fine. And I failed. <laughs> I do kind of like this theme though. But yeah, I was talking about it in the in one of the other sessions. But like, yeah, having a hidden world, like a special world, if you will. Is very Mario esque, like, it, like I think Azuka said 
directly, like, th they made this game to appeal to Mario fans. And having stuff like this definitely, uh, like, it, it definitely shows in, like, a lot of aspects. I don't, I definitely don't mind the idea of having a special world for a Sonic game, but it's certainly more of a Mario thing than a, than a Sonic thing. Like, Sonic doesn't usually do stuff like that. Like, you're... You might have, like, hard mode versions of stages, but you don't really have, like... Oh, good. Um, like, you, you have, like, hard mode versions of stages, but you don't really have, uh, like, a special world that's supposed to be super difficult or anything like that. But, you know, I, I don't mind that being in a Sonic game. I, I do like having a post-game, like, super challenge, if you will. Um, even if the first one is just super brain dead and you don't <laughs> like you literally win by not playing like i don't know what the idea with that was and i i guess i guess it makes sense for the final world to be really weird because uh, the game already has been that up to this point and the hidden world i guess like being a mesh of like all these weird stuff going on is a uh, like, it, it's appropriate for what this game has done up to this point, so I mean, so I guess, fair enough. Whew. Good. Ugh. He's in the Mario Galaxy platforms. Except these ones are black. Like... Okay. I guess I was supposed to spin dash jump. I think I was also just supposed to wait for this, but like... <laughs> who, who needs that platform when you can just spin dash? I guess this level also has that, like, it's one of those, like, levels in a Sonic game where, like, not, well, good, uh, just, Sonic levels in general, like, you can go the slower, so, uh, slower, more safe route, or you can be a daredevil and just try and speed things up, but put yourself at a lot more risk of the dying and stuff, and I do like that. Okay, I think this will just give me a life, because... Yeah, red rings don't exist here, so... Jesus. <laughs> okay, one other thing I I haven't mentioned yet is that the this game also has, like, some weird form of, like, super guide, or, like... Uh, you, you know how, like, modern Mario games have, like, a help... Like, they give you a helping hand if you die a lot? This game has that too, but it basically just gives you, like, this wing capsule... Uh, good. I keep doing that. This, like, wing capsule item that basically just makes you skip to the next checkpoint. And I made it no secret that I'm not the biggest fan of, like, a uh, super guide and stuff. But, like... Like, I, I, guess, I, I guess at least this isn't, like, make you go, like, beat the whole stage by doing it. But, like, I feel like just having it skip you to the, ne the next checkpoint is just really cheap. Like, I I think there's other ways to, like, make the game easier on uh, players that are struggling. Like, you don't, like, just make them skip the whole, like, skip them as, like, automatically make them skip a section of the level. I feel like that just ruins the whole point. Like, why am I playing a video game at that, at that stage? And cool. And now we're at the point where Oh god, I don't care. <laughs> and now we're at the point where we can't do the final level. So what we're gonna do is something that I've been holding off since the start of the game. We're gonna be doing the DLC. 
And we're doing the least interesting one first. The yeah, we have the uh, the night stage. I do think the DLC in this game is fairly cool. Like it's a lot more than what um, Generation scored. That's for sure. Which is kind of hilarious. Like I like how Generation's got like a casino night, uh, like like pinball table, but nothing else. Yet Lost World got like three different DLC. I think they were free as well. Don't get, don't get, uh, don't quote me on that though. Yeah, I, I don't. I played, uh, was it Nights into Dreams a while back, but I don't remember it too well. I definitely don't recognize any of these like bosses. But yeah, the, the essentially that these are meant to be like slightly, slightly more uh, difficult versions of the Deadly Six, like world bosses if you will um, although you don't actually you don't I don't I don't think you actually attack the deadly six themselves um, but you know yeah you just kind of get warped to the next section yeah, this, is, this is pretty cool I, I like little I, I mean crossovers in general I think I think are just really really cool. It's why we have stuff like Kingdom Hearts and all that, but yeah. This is neat. And I think this, like, what is it? After the update that gives you lives after 100 rings, like, this is a really good spot to just grind for lives. Whee! Yeah, don't don't ask me what a lot of these uh, like characters are supposed to be. I I wouldn't be able to tell you. I know this is meant to be Riala, but that's about it. Maybe I should replay Nights into Dreams because I do remember enjoying it. I know this like. Journey into Dreams, or like whatever the Wii, the Wii game was called. Um, I don't know much about that one, but maybe there'll be something to play on stream one day. <laughs> right, and then this thing we just kind of attack the tail. The thing is with um, with the uh, with this nice DLC is that it is on brand for the series. Like it's, it doesn't feel out of place like some of the other elements in this game, because Sonic has already done crossovers with Knights um, in like the adventure games, for instance. So it it doesn't feel out of place here. It, it feels it feels uh, natural for the series to do something like something like this at this point. But yeah, this this M bit just gives you so many rings. It's ridiculous. <laughs> God, yeah, you, they're easy to just grind lives here if you if you need that. And we save these creatures that, um, yeah, they just get converted into animals. I'm not gonna pretend I know what a lot of things are in Knights, because I don't. I played the game, but like I don't remember too much about it, I'll be honest. Yeah, th this game also does a weird thing where, with the DLC where like uh, the um, the stage disappears after you finish it, and it comes, like I said, it comes back after a certain amount of points, and. I guess it's just their way of balancing it, balancing it out, so you don't just get a bunch of lives or animals or whatever. But it's yeah, I don't know.
Okay. So I'm saving the Zelda zone for last. But now we have a stage. Yoshi's Island stage. This is pretty cool. I, li I like this. I like how the they changed the rings as well into like the Yoshi coins. Yeah, th this game had so much more cooler DLC than Generations did. I think I, I don't remember if this game came out before or after like Woody World, but it's a uh, yeah. I think you do need to be careful as well because the getting hit loose. I think it automatically makes you drop all your uh, Yoshi eggs. Okay, I can't do that. <laughs> and we have the flowers that are like collectibles in Yo uh, Yoshi games, as like the standing for red rings, which is pretty cool. Okay. Damn it. Oh jeez. Alright, that's that's fine. Not necessarily trying to do a perfect run or anything. I really ought to finish Woody World. I do I I wish they would just release it on the Switch, because I I'd be more likely to actually fit, uh, play it then. Although that being said, I still haven't actually finished uh, Yoshi's Island either. <laughs> I've only gone up to like the end of the first world and kind of just stopped. Oh, yeah, but you, you kick a shy guy into the piranha plant. So you, yeah, that 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 kills them. And that should be the end. Hooray. But yeah, just another way you can just rack up a bunch of lives. So that's pretty good. Now for the final DLC. This is really cool. I, I love this so much. It's just a open field based on the Zelda series, and uh, I failed at making the jump. It's just... yeah. Also, the link on his sky uh, on link on his sky loft. That's a good sentence. Link on his loft wing. Is uh, also the first. I think that's the first time uh, Link has been in in like had like a HD model, which is really funny. This is <laughs> I love this. I never get sick of that. <laughs> Yeah, it's also relevant because um, I'm like, like in well, I'm currently going through a uh, Ocarina of Time multi world with some with some friends. So yeah, this <laughs> this is like fairly relevant to what's currently going on. Yeah, it's not the biggest open space ever, but like this is just so cool, dude. I love. It. Oh, okay. This is just, I love it so much. I, I just having this these like this crossover DLC is just really cool. But yeah, 
Bomb Wisp is the only Wisp in the game that is only that is only unlocked through missions and stuff, or during the DLC. But I just want to show this off because if you know in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, if you use a bomb near a Sheikah, uh, like a Gossip Stone, they would fly up into the sky. They do it here too. I need to stop almost falling off. Yeah, I, like that attention to de that attention to detail is just I love I love that man. And also, yeah, as you're seeing, the rupees get converted into into animals. So this is like a great way to uh, rack up on the uh, on animals if you, if you need them. It's basically why I did the stage uh, now because it's it, it's how you get it, it's the easy easy way to get access to the final hidden world, but. Yeah, they also did this. If you if you attack the cuckoos enough, they start chasing you like a Zelda game. <laughs> so yeah. Oh yeah, the jumping on enemies also gives you hearts. By the by the way. But, yeah, everything about this is just so cool, dude. And you have these Gorons being like replacing the regular boulders you'd see in these stages, and I think this is. Uh, what is it? I think this music is meant to be the dungeon theme from Link to the Past. Oh yeah, this does have gyro controls, but I'm like mainly just using this using the stick. Yeah, I, this kind of just speaks for itself, uh, man. It's just. This is just so cool. I don't know how many I, I don't know how many of these rupees we're gonna need, but like Yeah. And one last time. And we should be near the end now. And the fact that I, I, again, I believe that this is also free as well. Like, this is just, yeah, I, I, I love this. I don't know what else to say, really. <laughs> awesome stuff. That is enough of the stage, right? <laughs> Okay, cool. So now for the final level of the game. <laughs> Spin that for two seconds. Oh boy, that's such a hard challenge. Okay. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, just warp to the hidden world and do this very strange last level. It's a uh, again the only only zone three is a platforming stage. This is like, I mean, I guess it's technically platforming, but not in the traditional sense. It's you kind of just jump. I, I don't even know what to call this. And that that background over there is like, I don't know what's going on there. But you have you just have these weird Pac-Man things. And oh good. And I remember this level kind of being a bit obnoxious, if I'll be honest. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't cause me too many issues here. Whee! 
Okay, I like how you can just do this though. <laughs> like for a while the stage is basically just you're just kind of jumping from these like spike things. Like these What what are we even what what are we even standing on? Like these like bubble platforms. Uh, I don't know. What was well, this like <laughs> bubblegum uh bubbles? I, I don't know. Whee! And this level doesn't have checkpoints if I recall correctly. Wait, you wanna try and aim make the spike balls aim for the the evil pa Pac-Man? And then after a point, I don't I don't remember how long this goes on for. Ugh! Okay. There is a slight gravitational pull to these like platforms, but it's it's, it, it's just, yeah. And then you have the giant evil Pac-Man thing. And your goal at this point is to send the spike balls into its mouth. But it's not exactly easy to do that when you're trying to actually, uh, like, land on the... on these platforms in the first place. And, uh... Yeah, it's, it's just... kind of annoying, more than anything. Ugh! Open your mouth, okay. What the hell? Okay, so he does, he does like a giant one and then like a sh short one, okay. I see. Alright, that's two. Oh, I'm just gonna play this safe. Oh yeah, and then, alright, oh, I forgot about this, he gets like a barrier. Oh man. Because this totally wasn't stressful enough. That would have been hilarious if it, like, went back and hit me. Oh! I don't know if it has it, it's act- I don't know if the hitbox is still, still active. So I'm just not gonna take any chances with that. Yeah, this this is just such a weird stage. Okay, it's still active. That's good to know. Okay, thank God. <sighs> yeah, not quite, not quite, not really a fan of that. Just such a weird way to end the game. Like, what the hell even? I I don't know, dude. And that's it. See what you have. Just for the hell of it. Sure, okay. Whatever. Um Yeah. I don't really have much else to say. That's the end of the game. <laughs> so yeah. I said all I needed to really. Um I don't really have much else to add, so yeah, that was Sonic Lost World. I still like this game quite a bit. I probably wouldn't say I like this more than lo uh, Colors or Generations, but it's still a fun time, I think. And uh, yeah, I got nothing else. So thanks for for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> oh god, for Sonic Forces, we gotta do it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, see you guys then. <laughs>